Hello and welcome to Simplified, the weekly podcast hosted by four people who get together and then decide what to talk about, but has gone <laughs> on for long enough that uh, no one's telling us to stop anymore. I am Tony and joining wow. me is always back fresh from a vacation in Thailand. Uh, the one oh, in ah. Chuck. Mm. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. yeah. Okay, He's so frozen that. on screen, but uh, cool on the inside and hot on the outside. Uh, say hi, Narin. Wow. Hello. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> am I still frozen on the screen? Okay. Uh, no, no, no. It's okay. Well, so just far, frozen in time. We just shall frozen not in jinx time. it. <laughs> Yeah. For our listeners, Narin is now using his third device to get into this recording. That's how much uh, hard work we do to bring you Simplified. And also, having woken up <laughs> at uh, 6.30 a.m. Yeah. in a very cold Canada. Say hi, Srikit. Yeah. Hi, what's yeah. up? I'm, I'm frozen in, uh, on the screen and Sh- Shriket is frozen in real time. So, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it is, uh, so, this yeah. is uh, a simplified uh, half pants episode. Uh, so, we are all wearing shorts. Oh, sorry. It's half pints. Is it? okay. Half pints <laughs> episode. So, <laughs> horrible. Tony, horrible. But, uh, I am sorry. Oh but very good. Sorry. But very good all at once. So, yes. Yeah. We, once in a while when we don't have a topic or once so why are we taking the blame? When the world runs out of topics for us oh. To simplify. Wow, we are yeah. here. We are ready to simplify. If the world is not delivering, means what to do? I know. Uh, so <laughs> yes. we decided to take four smaller pieces of. Uh, this is like uh, th- there's that one Friends episode, right? Where Joey can't remember if he's dated a girl or not. So like I think uh, someone uh, that Rachel or someone <laughs> says that. So basically, you've dated all the women in New York City, and now you're going over again. <laughs> yeah. And that was definitely yeah. half pants. Anyway, yeah. we will uh, move on. So uh, we have a few interesting facts to share with you. We have done a couple of half pints episode before. Basically, we bring one fact or piece of news or just some random piece of trivia that nobody could be bothered to fact check. And we bring it up for discussion over here. And I will start since this is my idea. I came across the article in the N- on uh, the NYT, which I thought was utterly fascinating. The article is called In China, Marriage Rates Are Down and bride prices are up and i had to yeah. see what bride prices <laughs> exactly were so long story when you say marriage in. rates it's it's not about the number of people getting married it's actually no, like, no. It's, it's actually, it's actually like the price yeah, it's actually the price it's, it, it's kind of like a reverse dowry of sorts so what has happened uh, is because of one child policy that was implemented a few decades ago that's got a lot of ramifications uh, which we have like, like seen like beijing's population has declined for the first time ever and all that one of the consequences is exactly this that uh, people preferred you know well sons over daughters which meant that the gender ratio got damn skewed which is so when everyone reached marriageable age there were very few women and there were a lot of guys and then the simple laws of economics kicked in and suddenly now there is an entire market like little market now for bride prices so women are or women's families rather are demanding money especially those who are in cities and are slightly educated and all that so I thought this was like kind of fascinating yeah, but- um, yeah, on many levels so I just thought I'd bring it to the table for your discussion and yeah. perusal But uh, very quick allied thing that I realized is that China ended their uh, one child policy in 2015, in 2016. And now they have like, I think up to three children allowed or something. Yeah, yeah. But but I think that's where, that's where I think they, they put more people in the job. Yeah, But China uh actually screwed up a little (laughs) bit where, I mean, the boom, especially in Asia, the boom in like child, uh, I mean, people had a lot more children, especially as we see with India right now, reaping the demographic dividend is, during the 80s and the 90s is where people had two, three, four more kids also. Like it was, that was the norm. And now, like as we are seeing in the 21st century, across all the industrialized or even developing nations, the birth rates are now falling, right? So the thing is where uh, where in China, where when they had the opportunity to actually grow their population, they had the one child policy. And now actually people don't even want to have kids. So actually people are having fewer kids and stuff like that. So it's it's become a huge problem by itself. So uh, I, mean, I have one. Uh, I have one anecdote to share, or one story of course. to share. Okay, so we Sheila and I went to China several years ago, maybe eight, nine years, ago. and uh, we had we hired an interpreter slash guide to go around. And this was a young boy, um, very early twenties, and uh, 
sort of you know really uh, you know very polite very very nice guy and uh, everything and we grew very fond of him so you know so he, he was a very nice guy and then when uh, after a, a day or two whatever city that was when our ways were to part he came most sincerely to sheila and me and he practically uh, you know with folded hands uh, requested us to find a find an indian bride for him like sheela so he's telling oh, wow me, so, <laughs> so, it was, so i told him like dude what what happened so he says no no i can never find anyone like sheela in china so you have to do this for me by which we mean women women like yeah so whatever or women we, like sheela or like women in general women in general i, I think he meant yeah. william women in general now sheila was awfully chuffed but uh, yeah i think he meant so let's leave it at that let's leave it at that let's leave it at the women like sheila that but this yeah. guy he followed up with me for more than a year so more than a year this guy would keep okay. texting and uh, saying hi and uh, yeah so that's yeah. why there there is some <laughs> sheila ki jawani based joke somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. does it does it does it your wife have a twin sister she does <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately she also has been married oh. yeah she is also married unfortunately and that guy is like out uh, whatever by a couple of decades so he like oh there <laughs> time is worth wrong <laughs> so <laughs> interestingly on population decline right it, i mean we speak of india overtaking china etc but several states in india actually have a declining population like kerala being the prime example uh, yeah where, it has like alarmingly declining sort of population i mean uh, that's the growth that's the, yeah that's the trend right like though i mean i mean age, the higher ed, literacy rates are inversely proportional to uh, population growth right so i mean that's that's always been the case and like obviously which is where i mean and looking at countries like canada in that context is where they have like kind of gone ahead of the game in some way and said that okay screw it we are not even going to bother trying to improve our birth rates so let's just go with immigration as the sole source of population growth so i mean that's why they are just importing people yeah i like this i like yeah. seeing these unintended consequences or policies uh, yeah. uh you know or rather unintended consequences of policies in china's case like i was looking at okay this was an interesting like, like for me i didn't really want to discuss this particular thing that i said but to me it was like oh wow because of a bad policy a few decades back look at what's happening right now so i so searched if there are any other consequences of china's uh, one child policy and uh, britannica.com delivered uh, by say but so there are three like very specific things that they said one is because of the preference for male children at home a lot of chinese girls got adopted by families in the us and other countries again kind of interesting <laughs> and the second one was because is because of the growing population of elderly people the result of the concurrent drop in children and born and rise in longevity or yada yada basically uh, China is getting older and there are fewer people to take care of them so a crisis is predicted in a few years just like how i think the same thing a same problem uh, people in south korea and uh, japan are worrying about and, and the third thing <laughs> and the third thing is kind of also kind of interesting so uh, because having more than one child was illegal for the longest time many children actually went unreported or were hidden from authorities so now yeah. these are pretty much undocumented citizens of china and they have a lot of hardship in obtaining education employment and uh, and all that so again unintended consequences of huh, i wonder if there's a podcast for that of uh, public policy <laughs> uh, anyway <laughs> on a slightly lighter note this reminds me of a campaign that a marketing campaign that a travel company in denmark had done a few years ago shrike ah, you might for remember you remember do it, do it, it for denmark. denmark so do it for denmark is a fascinating campaign again like shrike said the more advanced uh, uh, the more developed a country becomes uh, the less kids they want to have and scandinavian countries are a great place to start for that so denmark's population was rapidly declining and it was actually a problem so a travel company uh, based in denmark they offered couples who managed to procreate abroad uh, and if they did so successfully they would get a years worth of supplies from uh, the travel company i think the company pelt s p i e s if i remember correctly spice yeah, yeah, yeah. ps however you pronounce so, it in danish so basically the uh, thing yeah, was that the, the 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 funda that they had at the core was that people tend to have like tend to 
get uh, get pregnant or yeah, create no. more when they when they go on holidays like when they go on foreign holidays so they basically said that why don't they actually incentivize people to take more foreign holidays get pregnant and if they did after taking that this thing then they would give them a years worth of baby supplies and all that stuff uh, <laughs> whatever because i mean yeah, genuinely I, I, and yeah. then the campaign I, I, was do it for denmark <laughs> do it for do denmark it. and they had a follow you remember a couple of years back there was a uh, there was a campaign by some parsi organization in yeah. Korea yeah. to encourage yeah. parsis to have more kids oh, that yeah. was brilliant oh, copywriting right uh, yeah. what uh, be responsible don't use a condom and stuff yeah. like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so so there's there's a lot of that kind of stuff i mean especially with like uh, i mean in a lot of these uh, places like even for that matter even japan and uh, japan is also going through a similar kind of this thing where people don't want to have the kid don't want to have kids and like the governments are now incentivizing majorly like in some ways yeah. there uh, i think even in the middle eastern states and a lot of the gulf states like if you do end up having a kid even i i remember this was also the case in malaysia so in for example in mm. malaysia if you were to have a child as many children as you want to have like there is no cap as many children as you want to have the government completely pays so you so especially for the locals you don't have to pay for hospital visits you don't have to pay for gynecologist visits they give you like baby Maybe. supplies for a, about 2 years till the child is grown and then like free education other services like everything is taken care of by the government because they're like anyone who wants to have a kid we want to make like all the So, uh, I mean, as as easy as possible for them. So yeah, yeah, and yeah, and just today there's a headline: South Korea will give families seven seventy dollars a month to have a baby. This is how desperate countries are. <laughs> to I have, have the, I have this, uh, you know, this idle thought just uh, sort of crossed my mind. You know, the biological urge to procreate, right, to have children of your own, is really strong because that's how we we uh, progress as a species. So it it exists at a very very basic level, very sort of uh, you know. It's inside yeah. every cell. It's a basic yeah, instinct. Prime. It's a basic instinct. Yeah, and uh, I have seen this like completely anecdotally in several people that I know, several couples that I know. They've they've decided they decided first not to have children, and then later in life, uh, you know, they they couldn't resist the you know the urge, yeah. and then they ended up adopting or whatever. So what I wonder is how can large you know large population like South Korea or something lose that urge or lose that biological impulse uh, all of a sudden, like just in a matter of a generation. It must be because of economic, uh, sociological, and economic reasons. So in Japan, apparently, it's because uh, living quarters are really expensive, and uh, the way society is organized, um, you know, if if you don't have a house of your own, then you are looked down upon in in, in Japanese society. That's what I'm told. So I really wonder what must be going through the minds of uh, of people. I think it's uh, I think it's practical. quite likely. Yeah, it's practical. I think it's quite likely just to be. Uh, I mean, it's economic, right? That's the reason why, despite China lifting the one child thing, um, they are still not having kids. So it's economic. So to your point, not Arin, just economic, uh, right? It's it's. I mean, it's a societal thing, right? Like the moment you're educated, like the days. Sort of tribal feeling would be to stay with your tribe, right? When you didn't have any education and you would listen to the Correct. tribal elders and shit like that. And like the moment someone strays from or like questions the tribal leader, he would have been expelled from that, right? Correct. As you grow and you get educated, your sort of primary urge would be to get away from a joint family system and stay as like a couple or whatever. And then like child rearing becomes much harder, like the. Famous saying is that it takes a village to bring up a child, right? And in Good. sort of a joint family sort of setup, it becomes much much easier to do that. I, I think like there is a direct correlation between how which places have moved away from joint families. Kerala being a prime Good. example has nuclear mm-hmm. families, and then they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it's mm-hmm. not a True. worthwhile trade off. This is a very very uh, very interesting point actually. The sociological the existence of a support system in the bringing up of children and it appears to become really far more difficult like like exponentially more yeah. difficult if you don't have that support system yeah and yeah. and and also i mean i think the function is also about how the purpose of having children has also like evolved tremendously right like earlier when i mean we're not even talking about i mean we're talking about maybe two generations removed where people would be like they would want to the two reasons the two primary reasons to have a lot of kids is one you have more hands to work on a farm uh, because again the village will raise the child and overall like it the the net economics made more sense and the other thing was medical practices and like uh, 
I mean, childhood was a very uh, mortality. Yeah. Age. So yeah. you, yeah. Die, yeah. you, you mortality, have like ten yeah. kids, and four of them will die, and six will survive. So okay. I mean, that was what I mean. Two generations removed. That was what the case was. So I mean, very true. I mean, that was the purpose of having a lot of kids. But right now, with like the advancement of medical science, like people want to have kids because they feel the urge to have someone to kind of like. Carry on their name or feel that attachment towards uh, this thing. There are completely different reasons why people are having kids, and for that one, maybe two kids is more than enough. You don't need to have like a whole litter, right? So, <laughs> create ten four will survive. Seems like a very venture capital uh, <laughs> approach to having kids. <laughs> the, no, the, uh, the, I just wanted to. Like, I just unfortunately w- instead of kids now we make corporations. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what's actually needed. Uh, I just wanted to wrap up Narain's point on the primal urge and all that. Say that uh, both in China and South Korea, I see uh, graphs showing condom sales going up, up, and up. So it's not like the primal urge has gone anywhere. Uh, but again, economics and uh, everything yeah. else we spoke about right now. But anyway, enough of this. This was my little fact. On to who wants to go next? Me. Who else has something interesting? Yes, Narain. So uh, I read this interesting article, two interesting articles, both about fruits. Okay, the first one was about uh, banana peels, right? So banana peels, like universally, people throw them on the street most of the time for other people to slip on, so that somebody can make a comic movie or a cartoon out of it. But it turns out that it makes an excellent flower. Uh, so it makes an excellent uh, flower, as in uh, atta. Banana peel, okay, you, if you dry it and powder it, it becomes a flower which you can use for baking. So people have used it for baking cookies and they say that uh, the cookies turn out quite tasty and they are far more nutritious than the uh, you know, than the usual flour, the maida or uh, corn flour or the other things, Whoa. other flours that people use. Yeah, I can see a new food trend. I, I like, I can, like. There's going to be an article somewhere. The next yeah. super ingredient: banana peels. Kerala is going to be the leading world power in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, new gold, the new yeah, gold. The new gold. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think yeah. in the US, uh, basically they collect all of the chicken feet uh, because hmm. obviously no one yeah. eats it. But it's like a huge delicacy in China. And all of the chicken yeah, yeah. feet gets exported to China, I think. So, yeah. yeah, yeah Similar yeah, yeah. sort of banana peel situation. Uh, is the second fact related to bananas? No, it is related to fruit. Okay. So, one yeah. second. Let mm-hmm. me just uh, yeah. jump in okay. with an interesting thing about bananas, which is that mm-hmm. uh, humans eat bananas the wrong way around. So, mm-hmm. if you uh, oh. look at bananas in the wild and how animals eat it, they open mm-hmm. up the banana from the other side, not where it is attached to the bunch, but uh, where each banana has a tip, right? That small thing. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the side on which monkeys and other animals open up bananas. And oh, eat. wow. So wow. all of us are eating bananas from the wrong side. Uh, <laughs> if Jonathan Swift was around, there would probably be like a big Indian, little Indian kind of uh, situation similar <laughs> for bananas. Chuck is looking confused. Wow. You know the big Indian, yeah, no, little no. Indian thing? No, no. Uh, so uh, I, as always, I'm on the Wikipedia page for banana, banana. peel. And there are two things over here that are interesting to me, which I will proceed to read out to you, gentlemen. One is, of course, just the line. Banana peels as used as food for animals, a drink, an ingredient in cooking, in water purification, for manufacturing manufacturing of several biochemical products as well as for jokes and comical situations so like that is created <laughs> quickly and okay and now under use okay in uses like culinary use in comical context peeling methods and uh, pay attention especially Shriket psychoactive effects of banana peels I'm like excuse me there has been a widespread belief that banana peels contain a psychoactive substance and that smoking them might produce a high or sensation of relaxation this belief which may be a rumor or urban legend is often associated with the 1966 song Mellow Yellow by Donovan who often collaborated with the Beatles Uh, a recipe for the extraction yellow submarine (laughs) that yeah, which could be a banana. So, yeah, so we have simplified. Uh, we yeah, have simplified that's research John labs. Dumped are, a banana uh, in the water and called it that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we at simplified research labs take our content very seriously, and further <laughs> investigation into this matter shall <laughs> be um, construed. So, um, let's just try smoking yeah. a banana peel. Yeah. But, but <laughs> bananas are famously radioactive. 
because of the potassium potassium the, yeah yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 they are very rich in potassium yeah they are very rich in potassium and uh, so it, it makes a very good fertilizer because uh, potassium is a pretty key ingredient in any soil and it's always yeah. lacking yeah and yeah so uh, a lorry full of bananas is radioactive enough to trigger a false alarm on a radiation detector looking for smuggled nuclear weapons wow so this is why you see frequent uh, you know no, no, I police see gatherings some... at kerala border when yeah, <laughs> you see that and i see i see narain just itching to say that radioactive uh, story but we will pause because you have said it thrice on simplified and once on seen and unseen already so narain pause we are giving you like a 50 50 episode embargo on like each <laughs> repeating each story for those but of you who don't know what we're talking that about that whole that whole shipment would also be pretty apathetic because it will be very key Uh, okay. Yeah. There are 23 uses of banana fat. peels, huh? By the way, ah, there are 23 uses of banana peels, but never mind. That's on health. Yeah. Yeah. Not for anyone who's interested. <laughs> Not in your second. Your second. This was like second. some 20 mark assignment in B school or something. <laughs> started listing uses. I'm sure we can come up with more. But yeah, Not in second fruit fact. Yeah. So uh, fruits with very large seeds, such as mango and avocados. so the reason uh, these evolved with very large uh, very large seeds is that uh, they were designed for being propagated by large animals so uh, you know you would have to have an animal with an anus that big for it to pass through so in the case of india where mangoes are native to it was the elephants and in the the strange fact is in in america where avocados grew there is no animal with an anus large enough to allow the seed to pass through oh so they are uh, they, they so they, they so they of, relied on like uh, golf club players to <laughs> sort of put it on a tee yeah so uh, from a very where from a very early from a very early time it must have been the people the locals who would have uh, you know so there must have been some animals which are overlapping and they, are you saying americans that, are are full of assholes large yeah that's exactly <laughs> no i actually i was thinking of another parallel right so there are like there are there are fruits with large seeds that cannot propagate unless there are large enough anuses there are also ideas in this world that cannot propagate if there are Aren't large enough anuses, so oh, I would like and, to. <laughs> and for those, all of those, so we've been asking for a profundity. Here it is. Why, yeah, they, why do we need WhatsApp yeah, forwards when there are not even? There is nothing. Yeah. Brilliant, excellent. Yeah. Okay, people, oh, just deep keep. Deep so deep keep deep. this in mind next time. It's just about mango season starting here in India. So just remember this delicious fact next time you dig into an Alfonso. <laughs> excellent. Oh. So, uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think we need a break to recover from that uh, that fact. So profundity. Yeah. I will just seed yeah. break in. here so enjoy, enjoy this ad or plug for an other show but be back to ours in about 30 seconds and we are back with more half pints from the half pints that are simplified that made no sense but again yeah, what yeah. part of the show does yeah. uh, shrikit <laughs> you want to go we are yeah, one sure. pint down so uh, yeah so <laughs> yeah we are one moving from uh, seeds and chinese birth rate i am still in the process of uh, discovering different facets of this new country that i have moved to and one interesting factor that i have discovered like the one thing being like what what i really can't digest is that i am living in a country where mango seed mango seed you can't digest <laughs> no that also <laughs> I, i can't digest <laughs> i can't digest it i can't pass it either so <laughs> that is the other problem but yeah so no the 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 key the main factor is that we, there is a i mean I, the, i live in a country with a with very peaceful neighbors right like there are there mm. is no conflict with the neighbor like the us and the, uh, canada have the longest land border in the world and mm. they generally don't have much conflict with each other and i was like how can it be like this there has to be some conflict right oh mm. you're talking about neighbors from a country sense and not country. like who's living in flat no, 1103 no, 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 okay not, not like that They're national neighbors da uh, but anyway so <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh, where is the? Oh, oh, I mean, oh, I see where you're coming from. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, where we have I like, like how you generated a random flat number chart, which is nothing. One one zero three. Yeah, yeah. It was not so random, but anyway. But uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So here is where like I was like, okay, there has to be some conflict that has to have happened. So then I discovered that there was 
obviously when the americans got independence the the canadians and the canadians who were the british at that point of time and they had a war and all that stuff but even now and that's the funny thing that canada and us still continue to have one territorial dispute all right and it is the most hilarious territorial dispute that exists all right it is this so uh, it is this one island called the machaya sea island seal island all right it is a small rocky island all right that is like it is basically like only like say about 10 meters or like some it is basically like some uh, 50 meters in size and all that stuff as far as area is concerned it's completely rocky it's barren it has nothing on it all right was it just But like pooped out by an elephant this whole island <laughs> <laughs> potentially a bunch of mangoes were around here and now just the island <laughs> so so yeah so this this yeah. island has nothing on it but this is disputed because of some very funky reasons one that so when the americans got their independence in like 17 like when they won the battle of yorktown and all that in 1781 or whatever there was a treaty of paris that was signed in 1783 between the british and the uh, the new america the new united states of america who like signed this treaty and said that and the the treaty said that everything south of the saint croix river which is that one river that runs between us and canada and within hmm. 20 leagues of the us coast any islands or any water territorial waters within 20 leagues of the us coast belongs to the us all right that was signed in that in that treaty but then bef- uh, prior to that treaty there was a royal charter of 1621 that says anything 6 leagues off the coast of of what is territorial canada is canadian property right now it, by some uh, the miracle neither of the, these both could own conflict in pretty much anything except for this one small barren island which is 6 leagues off the coast of canada canadian uh, this thing and 12 leagues off the coast of american uh, land right so now now one thing is nobody would want to have possession of this land but what's interesting is the people want to have possession of the water because ah. this is prime lobster fishing area right so ah. it's off the coast of maine in the us and it's off the coast of uh, new brunswick in uh, canada and this particular area is very rich in lobsters right now lobsters uh, lobster fishing is like a big art where basically you have to like make sure that you don't overfish the lobster and you have to like make sure they have their breeding seasons and all that stuff right now because this is a gray zone both us and canadian fishermen are like there are no rules because both are fishing illegally in that waters because both have claims it's disputed <laughs> water so both tend to go there and just fish indiscriminately all right and it's gotten to a point where while the countries don't give a shit the countries actually have said this is disputed and we'll forget about it because nobody gives a crap there the the fishermen are going and fighting each other over there oh. so like apparently some fishermen have gotten shot and all that stuff while trying to fish at different oh points of time right oh. and the more hilarious thing is here that while the us claimed a territory on that island the canadians who were the british in 1800s went and built a lighthouse over there so the only thing on this particular island is one lighthouse that was built by the british in 1832 now all the lighthouses all the tiny islands that are off the coast of canada and the us are all unmanned all right these are all unmanned uh, lighthouses because now they no longer need to physically man lighthouses except for the machaya seal island which is manned by two canadians around the year right <laughs> wow. are you serious <laughs> and this they, so they there is an isle of man and an isle of two men <laughs> yeah so they and they know there's actually an isle of man only the two are in rotation so like six months six oh. months there's like so there's just one man who goes and rotate one man, man. Yeah. yeah so there's a, there's actually there's actually a documentary which covers the life of this one man who just sits on this island doing nothing he has no jobs that is crazy that is amazing he has to sit right. on the island and just like basically say i am here therefore this is canadian right how <laughs> how, how does one apply hey, this, for this, this job seems like uh, one very good place for like it outsourcing someone who is on the bench can just go and sit there <laughs> yeah it's effectively <laughs> that and be productive you can build them up and here's the hilarious <laughs> part <laughs> along along with the lobster overfishing that does happen in the waters the island is a great place for puffin you know puffin birds to come and flock the lot of puffin birds come puffin over there drop. yeah puff, I, i can actually see there are tours over there yeah so now the basically the thing is american and canadian uh, tourists come and see the puffin birds over there and neither ne- that lighthouse keeper doesn't mind so he's like screw it whoever wants to come come so everyone comes and does that and like because the americans also i mean are like patriotic there is this one dude called barna norton 
who turns up every year on the island and plants an American flag over there and goes away. And then the lighthouse keeper goes and takes out the American flag and goes away. So basically, that's Amazing. the ritual. So there is no, Amazing. like the, the governments don't care about who owns the island. Everyone goes whenever the hell they want to. There's lobster fishing indiscriminately happening in the waters. Dudes come and plant flags and go away. Lighthouse keepers come and sit in the lighthouse and go away. And that's how life goes on. <laughs> there is some Amazing. absolutely... So basically, bri- ha, go on, go on, go on. No, no. So basically, it's two countries just puff in their chest and like... Oh! Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> there are some... Lovely- and like, it's a lobster fight. Uh, the only thing that can be... Uh, even more benign is a bolster fight. Bolster? But, <laughs> oh, sir, go on. The, uh, but uh, what I was saying was, uh, you should go and see the Google reviews of this island, which, by the way, the only uh, thing that is reviewable on that island is Shriket. The, the lighthouse. lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> the lighthouse. So, there are two, there are, uh, there are two, in my two minutes of reading, perusing through, there are two memes that are hap- going through over here. Uh, one is uh, people randomly claiming, like, this is part of other countries. Like, oh, this is like, <laughs> what a stunning island. I can't believe that this is the only land left in Czechoslovakia. May Czechoslovakia <laughs> return to its former glory. So, this <laughs> one meme is there happening. I see this for a few other countries as well. And the second meme is in, uh, both uh, Americans and Canadians very, very obviously getting overly patriotic and like, eh, like they claim that this is theirs, but this is how. So it's, it's 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 good fun and good banter. This reminds me of that. I'm sure you guys know this. Uh, the Hans Island, the uh, small island that was a fight between quote unquote fight between Denmark and Canada. So where yeah, you get yeah, the Denmark and, tobacco, is it? Uh, very good Sorry. chewing tobacco, which is. I don't know about chewing hands. tobacco, but it, but it actually, uh, it's actually very much like this island only the way Shrikit described it. It's random. It's in the middle. Nobody wants that place, and it's yeah. actually. So you might wonder uh, where there is a border between Den- between Denmark and Canada, and that is off Greenland, which is yeah, a territory, I suppose, of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's in the territory yeah. of Greenland. So there's a small island called Hans Island, which is between Greenland and Canada. And for the longest time, it, there was a friendly dispute where the Danish would uh, come, they would remove the Canadian flag and put uh, and keep whiskey, and then the Canadians would do the same. And this went on for a while until the governments played spoil sport in 2022 and decided to actually have a, a resolution. And now half the island belongs to uh, Canada and half the island be- belongs to. Denmark. So that is that. That's the Hans Island in the Arctic. That goes nicely with this. I'm sure there are many other random little, uh, you know, yeah, islands. And I'm like, uh, like this. I mean, I mean, that's what, right? When you look at it, like, there's such a, it's such a. A Canadian amicable way of like resolving a border yeah. dispute or living with a border dispute and like I'm looking at like I mean imagine if they, we did uh, similar things with Kashmir at some point of time but now <laughs> Tony's fact let's Tony's fact no one second but Srikith uh, uh, you mentioned uh, the Paris Treaty and yeah. uh, in true accordance to Godwin's law <laughs> I I remembered an yeah. amazing fact which is that uh, in when the World War uh, One happened in 1918, when Germany was supposed to surrender, uh, the German officers actually sort of uh, signed the surrender in one coach of uh, the yeah, Orient the Treaty of Versailles. Yeah, the Treaty of Versailles, yeah. right? And yeah. and then basically, but the f- funny thing is, it happened in the Orient Express. So during yeah. World War Two, when France finally had to surrender, Hitler brought that coach and. Yeah. Put them in that particular coach and made them no, sign their surrender. He dragged it there. out back to and that. So it had gone to a museum. Yeah. So he dragged it out back to that original yeah. spot. Got those guys to get back into that coach and then get it to sign inside. And that. sign it. And then like four years later, when or few years later, when he realized he was losing the war, the first thing he did before anything else was blow up this compartment up so coach. that they wouldn't wow. force him to sign the surrender there. So, wow. yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, different yeah. So actually, uh, the, the original signing of the Treaty of Versailles, Versailles in that coach is is uh, there in the movie All is Quiet on the Western Front. It's it's actually very nicely oh, done in that movie. Okay, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So it's on Netflix. Yeah. So it's worth watching. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen so, yes. Banshees of Ed Sheeran either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think Tony, it's time for your fact. Tony. Yeah. Okay. So my fact is uh, basically we started with China. We lined with Japan. Is that uh, I always like these marketing gimmicks, which have just become a part of our life. Uh, my fact is that uh, the ten thousand steps measure that we use today has absolutely no basis in science, and it originated in Japan for the nineteen sixty four Tokyo Olympics, 
बिकॉज द नंबर टेन थाउजेंड इन द कंची स्क्रिप्ट लुक्स लाइक अ मैन वॉकिंग so oh, really? they're like oh, yeah wow. and like uh, it doesn't have as, as no bearing for anything right and and practically it is older and more prevalent and more culturally significant than the other walkman from japan right so oh. people still <laughs> people still talk oh. about 10000 oh. steps right and like if you look at the signs obviously like walking x number of steps has is is good because you can target it and cc to do and stuff like that but like there's no real backing to it apparently like 7000 steps or something is just as uh, effective and it will vary from person to person and basically there's been no scientific uh, study done on this right but interestingly when when the sony walkman came about uh, people actually sort of saw an increase in people walking around just so that they could listen uh-huh. to music so there would have been a point uh, somewhere during the 70s or 80s when people were actually wearing both of the walkman like the pedometer to walk 10000 steps as well as the sony walkman so yeah oh, wow wow fantastic it makes me think like what are the other like rituals or other beliefs that are actually just either marketing giving us something like the the whole brushing twice a day or just brushing at all wasn't that uh, something that colgate or somebody came up with yeah. Uh, about a century and a half back so i don't yeah. know so similarly yeah, so you don't need to brush yeah, it yeah. <laughs> yeah something there is, there is something like that it's all just uh, fake it's news it's not exactly a ritual but the other one which is entirely based on superstition is the fact that so i got this when i worked on savlon for a little bit like the 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 formulation of detol like the the yeah. antiseptic detol yeah is yeah. actually the 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 formulation is like an old formulation that was developed during the world wars all right and back then they didn't know better so that's why they used to add so the the burning sensation and the antiseptic smell comes from some, from yeah. turpentine which is part of the which is part of the detol formulation which later on they discovered was not required and they got a better formulation which is yeah, savlon yeah, which yeah. does not need to burn but the thing is because the burning sensation and the smell became so closely associated with like the healing of like or the killing of bacteria and the antiseptic properties of savlon and yeah, uh, you feel detol, like some shit is happening you feel like something's happening so now in fact that smell and the burning sensation is added specifically so that the yeah, yeah. people feel it's that so is, it's not required a, Yeah this is a simplified episode by itself a needless yeah. things added just to give that illusion like electric yeah. cars right now uh, they are so silent but people want that feeling that there is yeah, actually something sound, happening yeah, so there actually sound happened. added the sound uh, added the electric hum cars and that yeah. stuff is yeah required yeah so so I, I, absolutely so i mean this is all like and again like similarly there's also the when you're talking about cars the, the 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 there is the sound of the car door closing is actually engineered like, yeah Yeah. because uh, it's supposed to like create a certain amount of this thing it needs to close in a certain way to communicate what the car is like and how the car is supposed to be and all that stuff like for example if you've got a big truck like a huge like a semi truck and all that stuff and if the door closes very quietly then you don't feel like your truck is robust enough so actually they have to make the <laughs> truck sound like so when they close the door it needs to have a thump to it so there's a lot of these semiotics that are actually added when they are not required because like people need to feel a certain way about certain products so yeah this is quite fascinating so uh, dear yeah but please, i mean it, uh, it is a uh, actually design principle right which is that yeah. feedback is more important than actually something happening Precisely. in the being yeah. there yeah, yeah. so I think we've all installed several CDs back in the late '90s, early 2000s, when the progress bar would just keep going. Yeah, ninety-nine yeah, percent it would stop for thirty minutes. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> what is happening? So, like, some of these yeah. things are just added just to give you yeah. a feeling that something's happening. The, bi- in the, the biggest, I mean, the bis- biggest placebo of the digital era, I'd say, is antiviruses. Like <laughs> most of them do nothing. Like Norton has created a whole industry out of it, and they, they, I yeah. mean, yeah, you, you really Norton's basically that. just randomly planting flags on islands and yeah. uselessly <laughs> taking oh. space <laughs> or, or, pass, or passing seeds through their anuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I, I had uh, connected connected to the Japan ten uh, thousand steps story. I had a rather tragic anecdote. So, oh my! Yeah. So this this happened in a factory close to mine. So I know the guy, and uh, he was a uh, how shall I say a little uh, overweight, right? So his wife got him a Fitbit, and she told him that you have to walk ten thousand steps because it says so in the on the internet. 
and this guy for him it was complete agony right so and she had it connected like they like obviously the fitbit was connected via bluetooth to his phone and shared with his wife so she knew exactly how much how many steps this guy had walked so eventually what so this guy did him, was uh, so. he hired a full time appointee whose Ross only job ability. was to wear the watch wear the fitbit thing uh-huh. and walk up and down in the factory and everything was fine so this guy would be basically chilling out chilling out in his office and this employee would be run walking up and down sometimes clocking even as much as 20000 steps and wife was very happy then one day that was when the tragedy struck so one day he something happened he had to go out and he went directly home and he forgot all about this guy and this guy was merrily walking up and down and his wife could see a uh, the husband was at home and the uh, fitbit was recording steps, steps. and uh, then she put him under the lights and then he had to face <laughs> everything but it was so sad yeah and it was all because of this japanese 10000 steps thing oh. so yeah can, can i add a, can mm. i add a quick uh, uh, one before we close yeah, this yeah, episode yeah. in two minutes uh, is that uh, actually the bef- pre mba a lot of us did jobs which like we did because it was default right like <laughs> you did some random branch in engineering but then you ended up doing some software somewhere and usually you like a lot of people were on the bench right so this happened to my friend happened to my friend rather he like created the scenario wherein he realized that he has absolutely no work but he has to go every day and punch in and punch out right like mm. the entry needs to be made so he realizes his id card has two parts one is the id card itself and behind that there is a sensor thing right so he basically plucked out that part and inserted it into his friend's id card he's like i'll stay home you <laughs> do this thing and <laughs> it all worked well till one day this guy was getting in and then the hr was right behind him and then oh. he saw that it beeped twice and he's like hey what is that and then this guy went back and checked the logs and figured out that uh, oh, this whole no, scam was going on <laughs> but but <laughs> thankfully my friend uh, made it through cat that same year so <laughs> easy <laughs> 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 fantastic <laughs> amazing feelings so. to the rescue yes <laughs> 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 this is amazing i like these half pint episodes see we all learned something new today despite having hardly anything to start with it's like so yeah. also a tagline <laughs> for the fight also a tagline for the fight so narin uh, two standard drinks pretty pretty yeah. standard two standard drinks yes that's right yeah stay safe stay pinted and stay simplified folks and see you next week <laughs> <laughs>